Well, thank you, Justin. And uh, it's really um, hard for me to really express how much of a thrill it is that all of you are here. Um, uh, I think I think we uh, this effort um, about shared value uh, is, is an effort that it's kind of had very deep roots. I mean, you could argue that a hundred years ago, the best companies understood this instinctively, and I think in Nestle's roots, uh, we'll we'll talk later about about the instinctive understanding that there was actually a deep alignment between uh, capitalism and meeting societal needs. Um, but I think as we started to rediscover uh, this idea some years ago, uh, um, we, I, I think we uh, were fortunate uh, that today's time is right uh, to kind of re-examine uh, this issue and to uh, develop this issue of shared value. And, and the fact that all of you are here and the fact that there's just so much activity in this area now around the world is uh, thrilling to me. Um, and I've written a lot of articles in my day, uh, but I, I can tell you that there's no uh, article I've written that I'm prouder of than this article uh, and, and to start this discussion. And I can tell you that there's no, nothing that gives me greater excitement about the, about the future than this discussion we're going to be having uh, here uh, at this summit. Um, we literally are in the process of restructuring how we tackle society's most important problems. Uh, the old model hasn't worked. Uh, everybody's tried hard. <laughs> the old model hasn't been working. We don't have enough resources to do it the old way. We don't have enough money in government. We don't have enough money to contribute to NGOs to deal with this, these problems in society the old way. We've got to deal with them in a profoundly different way that, by the way, has important roles for all the stakeholders. It's not that anybody's out of business here. Everybody's still in business, but we just have to do it a different way. That's what creating shared value is all about. We're also, and this is very exciting for a Harvard Business School professor, we are also redefining how we think about competition, how we compete, how we position ourselves, how we manage supply chains. How, how we think about the community as an impact on our success in business. These are things that we in business schools have never taught before. Not because they wasn't, weren't there, but because it, 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 it really was something that we kind of not understood as we uh, started to make management a profession and a discipline and rigor and analytical as, as it has over the last uh, 10 or 20 years. So we see here a, a remarkable, I think, moment uh, in which uh, business, as well as the other stakeholders, uh, if we can learn how to think about this clearly, if we can work together in different ways, uh, we will have profound uh, opportunities to actually solve societal problems. Not just kind of provide Band-Aids and try to amel ameliorate suffering and minimize harm, but we'll actually be able to solve these problems. That's the opportunity. That's what brings us all here today. And uh, all of you, whatever organization you're in, whether you're in a business, or whether you're an NGO, or whether you're a government person, or whether you're in some other segment, uh, all of us, I think, have an opportunity to transform what we do. And as Justin said, uh, the question we now really face is the question of, how do we go about this? How do we go about this? Now, just to start, I, I, I wanted to let you know how uh, widely spread the shared value movement is starting to be around the world. Uh, these are just, uh, uh, these shaded countries are just the places in which FSG, uh, including me, has actually participated in, in a meaningful way uh, in the shared value agenda over the last couple of years. Um, and, and there are probably more that, that we missed. Th this, is, this is a discussion that's taking place in developing countries. It's taking place in advanced countries. It's taking place in every region of the world. There's a tremendous resonance. And I think that's, it's clear why that's happening. Uh, it's happening because, on the one hand, societal challenges are now very evident. We have more awareness of societal problems of health and nutrition and the environment than any time that certainly I can remember in my professional career. Uh, we also have business feeling under fire. Uh, we in business, we try to be good guys and good women. 
We try to do the right thing. We try to be ethical. Uh, but we're, we're, getting, we're being viewed with, by society with skepticism. And the more we do to be responsible and the more we do to try to be philanthropic and community-oriented, the more skepticism we seem to, uh, we seem to engender. Um, it's, it's clear then that, that we have to tackle these issues in a different way. We have to, we have to take a, a different approach. Uh, uh, again, just some, just some little anecdotes. You know, there's now a very thriving shared value club at the Harvard Business School. Boy, am I proud of that. Uh, you know, there are now, there's now a national prize in shared value, um, uh, a national prize sanctioned by the government in Korea. Uh, th these things are happening now all over the world, and I hope some of you can be involved in, in, in creating these kind of uh, accelerators uh, in your, in your, in your uh, region, in your country, in your organization. Uh, the, 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 there's something very, very powerful here going on, and, and the challenge we all have is how do we actually do it? Uh, we know, uh, we know, we're starting to know a fair amount about shared value, uh, but, we, uh, but there's a lot more to know. Uh, about how to do it. Um, and what I'd like to do very briefly this morning is, is kind of give you sort of my sort of capsule view, uh, first of all, of some of the critical uh, ideas here that we're starting to get greater clarity on uh, around the notion of shared value, uh, some of the uh, 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 tools that we are starting to uh, 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 master or, or, or at least uh, understand better in terms of how you actually put this into place in, in progress, um, and uh, uh, some of the promise we have of actually driving the notion of shared value to even broader sets of stakeholders. We have a major initiative now to think about how we take shared value and, and, and in, incorporate it into investing and into the capital markets. And I'll share a, a, little, a little bit of uh, that I, uh, material with you in a moment. We also have an enormous opportunity to have a conversation with uh, Peter Brabeck. Peter is uh, my friend for many years. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Peter Brabeck. He, uh, he literally forced me to write this article, Creating Shared Value, and Mark. Wouldn't have done it without Peter. Uh, Peter is uh, of all the CEOs I know, he gets instinctively in his gut this idea, and he's had, had it forever. And, and we can talk later about how that happened. How could this person have gotten this idea so clearly ingrained in his very way of looking at the world? Uh, and we'll have a chance to engage with Peter. Uh, Nestle is a company that's probably for the longest time had the most explicit uh, uh, con commitment to the notion of shared value uh, of any company we know. But uh, fortunately, lots of other companies are catching up, including Beckton Dinkinson. We're very lucky to have uh, Vince Forlenza here. Vince is, is, again, my friend. I'm proud to say he's my, my student. Uh, and uh, uh, you know that explains everything, of course. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, are, we are so proud to have Vince here. And so many other people in this room I know, your friends. And I, we're, again, we're so happy to have you here. So let, let's spend a minute talking about the idea of shared value. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, you know, putting this idea into practice. What are we learning about some of the essential uh, elements of, of, of doing so? Um, how, how are we starting to think about uh, bridging this uh, divide between uh, business and, and investors uh, in thinking about shared value? And, and then we'll uh, hopefully uh, uh, tee up a, a wonderful conversation with uh, Peter. Okay. So um, you know, let's let's all just kind of take a minute and uh, kind of get aligned with the very very basic idea here. And the basic idea is that there's a, a portfolio of ways in which a company uh, engages with society or could engage with society. Um, and I get the, the most uh, common traditional way was through philanthropy. Um, and philanthropy, corporate philanthropy remains active and alive and well, and it needs to be. Uh, in fact, what we now know is that corporate philanthropy is a fundamental building block for shared value if you use it well. Uh, it, 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 it's an it's a opportunity to create the environment which may, allows shared value to occur. Uh, we, 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 we also know that there's a s other set of activities that go beyond philanthropy, which are typically labeled corporate social responsibility. Those are important. 
There's a big role for those that will never go away. Um, we have to, uh, th those roles include compliance. They include they, they include meeting ethical standards. They include citizenship activities. They include this notion of sustainability. Um, the corporate social responsibility, in in its f essence, is uh, compliance, but also minimizing harm. Um, and, uh, and, and those activities remain uh, critically important. And there's a tremendous amount of energy uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, agenda uh, that will never go away. We'll, we'll always have to relearn uh, uh, how to comply with, uh, with, with uh, standards in, in new ways as those standards evolve. We'll always have to embed our companies with ethical standards. Uh, we, we'll always have to think about uh, minimizing impacts, uh, unfortunate or negative impacts our organizations have on the community or on the society. But those two things, uh, philanthropy and corporate social responsibility, are not shared value. Shared value is fundamentally defined by the fact that it is capitalism. Shared value is capitalism, full stop. It's about tackling societal issues and social problems and social needs with a capitalist business model. It's not about taking resources from the business and devoting them to other worthy activities. It's about the business itself. The, the central core idea in shared value is that uh, meeting social needs and dealing with social problems and improving the communities, the strengths of the community within which you operate actually uh, are profitable. Uh, it's capitalism full stop. Why is this capitalism part so important? Why do I use that word? Some people in this room probably cringe now when I say the word capitalism. Capitalism is important because when we can get the activity into the capitalist bucket, we create magic. <laughs> we create magic because we can scale. We can scale, infinite scale. If we have to take resources from the business and use those to meet a worthy social need, we can't scale. We only have so many resources. If we can get things into the capitalist bucket of shared value, then we can scale. Then we can sustain activity indefinitely. Then we can actually solve problems, not just make do pilots, not just make little, little, little bits of progress. We can actually solve problems. See, this is the magic of capitalism. It's self-sustaining. It's self-sustaining. Uh, uh, and the concept of shared value is not that we should stop doing corporate philanthropy. No, no, no. We'll see that corporate philanthropy is a fundamental tool to enable the shared value part to actually happen. We have to make some platform investments in many cases in order to get the capitalist engine running. Uh, uh, we don't want to stop uh, complying and, and being ethical and being a good member of our community and worrying about minimizing our impacts. We don't want to do that. Uh, that's all fundamental to being, uh, being the kind of companies we all want to be and winning the respect of society. But the real prize here, if what we care about is not just our reputation, but actually making a difference, is shared value. That's the real prize. If we can get as many things that we do uh, addressing as many societal uh, issues into the shared value uh, uh, column, then we're really off to the races. Um, and uh, that's, I think, uh, what we're all here to understand. H how do we do that? But I can tell you there's still a lot of confusion uh, over, over what we mean by shared value. Uh, uh, I think what we're going to do next year in this con, we're going to get a list of all kinds of social initiatives that companies are doing. And we're going to give you a test. And we're going to ask you which ones of these are shared value and which ones are not. <laughs> because if you look at the typical list of things that a company is doing, that I hear every day, uh, there's still a lot of confusion about, about making this distinction. But the distinction is really important because the nature of the activity is very different. It's not that CSR is bad. It's not that philanthropy is bad. It's just that CS, CSV is different. 
because it has this magical aspect of scalability and sustainability uh, that the other activities do not. Okay. Now, um, we know that uh, in thinking about shared value, and, and, and this basic framing now has been, is quite robust after years and years of work and many, many thousands and thousands of examples. Uh, we know that shared value uh, is created in three fundamentally different levels or in three def fundamentally different ways in any, in any business. All companies can create shared value, every single one. Not necessarily in every one of these areas but always somewhere. So that's the starting point. We know that the particular opportunities for shared value are specific to the business. CSR is generic. ESG indicators are generic. Here's good things that everybody has to do. Shared value is specific to the particular business. Uh, the, the things that are material depend on the business. Um, and, and, and therefore, we have to start, we have to think about shared value not in this, gee, we, we, the, there's, there's no formula here. Uh, it, it's understanding the opportunities that are specific to the particular business that, that, that we look at or, or, or care about. Uh, we, have, we have opportunities at these three fundamental levels, the product, the need and the needs that that product are meeting. Um, and what, we've, what shared value does is it opens up our thinking about what needs we are actually meeting and what needs we could meet. Um, uh, and uh, some of those opportunities are, come from sort of the emerging world, uh, the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, many of those opportunities uh, uh, come from uh, uh, apply across uh, all, all the markets in which we operate. Uh, you know, uh, one of the major uh, banks in America, uh, regional banks called Regions, uh, has, uh, you know, the, you sh the CEO talks about how uh, the banking industry used to configure products that would succeed if the customer failed. So you give a customer a free checking account, and you don't get any money on the free checking account because it's free. You make your money on the overdrafts, OK? Uh, that's an example of, of, of what so many companies have done. They've been sort of trying to be clever in creating business models to meet, uh, to meet what they thought were needs or customer uh, needs. But ultimately, they weren't creating shared value. And what Regions has understood is actually we need to design products where if the, if, if the, pro, uh, the, the product encourages the customer to succeed. Uh, they now have a whole suite of products designed for underbanked households uh, called Now Banking. Uh, they, they've discovered that about 25% of their entire market opportunity in their, in their many, many states in which they operate is underbanked customers. That's the big market. Um, and, and they've designed those products so that the more the customer is able to uh, you know, uh, succeed in, in keeping, you know, having a positive balance, uh, being prudent about the use of their funding, uh, the more benefit they get at the bank. So essentially they're rewarding success as opposed to profiting from, from failure. This is the kind of thinking that seems obvious to, to us now, but without the kind of shared value uh, uh, true north, so many companies, as they thought about their products and as they thought about their target customers, have missed these opportunities, both in the emerging world, uh, because we haven't thought that poor people were good customers, but also in the advanced world as well. Um, the second level of shared value is actually in the way we operate the business, the so-called value chain. You know, here, every company can play. Every company can play. Even if your product is not food so that you have this nutrition opportunity, or even if your product is uh, you know, a fence you know, that goes, uh, that d divides people's yards, and you don't see the social need there, except, uh, you know, I don't know, we could probably speculate on the social needs of fences. But, uh, you know, but even if your product doesn't seem to reek of social impact, 
your value chain always does. You're always using resources. You're always uh, in, in engaging in logistics. You're always, uh, uh, you know, you always affect the health and safety and well-being of your employees. Uh, so there's opportunities for shared value at the value chain level, uh, that where, and there's opportunities for everybody here. Um, what we what we're learning is productivity in how we do business is transforming as we recognize the role of resources and, 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 the role, and how we use people uh, and other resources in order to compete. And uh, uh, the, the, whole, the whole manual of supply chain management is being rewritten right now as we speak. The whole manual of how we do procurement is being re rewritten as we speak. Uh, the whole manual of how we manage logistics and use logistics and how intensive logistics needs to be is being rewritten as we speak. Um, and that is because, you know, we, 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 when we thought about social problems historically, we thought about them using the framework of externalities, that there were all these externalities. Well, actually, the reality is there's internalities, that all these social problems inflict cost on the company. If you use too much logistics, you're wasting money. If you use too much energy, you're wasting money. If you're using too many resources, you're wasting money. If you're not uh, realizing the potential of your employees because they're unhealthy or because you're exposing them to risk, uh, you're wasting resources and money and efficiency and productivity. We're rewriting uh, how we think about value chains as we speak. There's opportunities for everyone in this room uh, in that area. And the third level of shared value has to do with the surrounding community. The assets of that community, the supply, supplier base in that community, the institutions in that community. And we in business have, have been too narrow in our thinking that our success comes from what we do, rather than recognizing all, that the institutions of the community have a profound effect on our productivity and our, and our efficiency. I think we're, we're starting to, to understand uh, some of these new ways of thinking that I think have been uh, revealed by uh, this notion of shared value. How, ca how can we think about competing and operating in a way that actually creates economic benefits to us, but also meets importance of societal needs? Um, and, and it turns out that that framing of the issue, I think, is profoundly um, stimulating. Uh, we're convinced that this is where the growth is <laughs> for every business almost in this room. You're not, you're not going to grow by meeting the conventional needs of your conventional customers in the conventional way. The growth is going to come from meeting new needs, which are often the most important societal needs that we have. That's where the real needs are in society. We don't need more you know, quantity of food, probably eating too much. We need more nutrition. That's where the growth is. How do we do that? Um, and so on and so on. Uh, this shared value opportunity, this way of thinking, uh, is just exploding innovation in how we do things. And the technology is embedded in our products and our, and our value chains. Uh, and this shared value perspective is going to be disruptive. <laughs> Uh, as the organizations who move more quickly and aggressively in recognizing these opportunities and seizing them, uh, and, 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 and seizing them through changing how they operate, uh, are going to gain significant uh, advantages. Now, shared value is something that we haven't really even tried to measure historically. Um, uh, we, we've tended to have in business, we've had our financial statements, and those get ever more complicated every, every moment of the day. Uh, we have more rules to follow. So we have our financial statements, and then we have our social reports, or our, you know, whatever we call them, CSR reports. And they're two separate reports. And what we, what we start to understand now is that in order to do the shared value, we have to connect those reports. We have to understand the economic, direct economic effects of our efforts to improve societal um, outcomes in whatever way is relevant to our business and our value chain and our community. Um, and this direct line of sight between economic and, and social is uncomfortable. I have company after company tell me, well, we don't really want to talk about all the profit we're making. 
Because if we're making profit, even though even if we're solving the problem of world hunger, if we're making profit, people are going to look at us and say, well, that's not worthy. That's not really social impact. Of course, you know what? It's the opposite. If we can actually solve a problem like nutrition, making a profit, that allows us to really solve the problem. See? So it's actually more worthy. It's more societally valuable if we can create economic and business models, shared value models for addressing these societal needs than if we uh, still have this mindset that it's really about trade-offs and about uh, uh, taking resources from the business and, and applying them to worthy things. We know that shared value is becoming one of the integral concepts in thinking about strategy for a company. How you position yourself, how you define your, your value proposition, how you make yourself unique. Uh, the great strategies of the future will have shared value dimensions. It'll be deeply embedded in the value proposition and in the set of choices companies make and the different sets of choices they make. Uh, you know, and, and companies like uh, uh, Whole Foods that used to be viewed as flaky and weird show the ability of this kind of thinking to create a whole new space in a commoditized industry, and they are by far the most economically successful uh, grocery chain, you know, probably in the world, certainly in North America. So again, when we think, we, this shared value is not just something sort of on the margin. This is something that will translate itself into the core strategy thinking of the businesses in which we compete and, and the corporation as a whole. And what we're starting to understand is that um, it's also opening up a whole new way of thinking about mission and mission statements. Too many companies think about mission and who they are and what they do in terms of their product. We are a food company. Uh, you know, we are a airplane company. We are a this, we are a that, defined by what they make. And what shared value is starting to help us understand is that the bigger opportunity and the more profound way of thinking about a company is uh, you know, what purpose we serve, what need we actually meet. And this Simple distinction between what we make and what need we serve is a profound opener up of thinking and innovation in the company. It changes everything. I've just put a few examples on, on, on this slide. Uh, it, 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 it opens up so many new opportunities that we've never seen before in most companies. And as I work with management teams, we, we're, we're finding this over and over and over again. And, and you'll find it in your business. When we think about shared value, all of a sudden, what happens is very interesting with respect to stakeholders. When we think of our goals sort of simply and narrowly as maximizing profit, and we don't understand that there's a the shared value is, the, is a powerful uh, way of thinking about and driving profit, uh, if we think about maximizing profit, then we, we are wary of the stakeholders. You know, we, we're the profit guys, and the government is the one who wants to tax us and regulate us, and the NGOs want to give us a hard time, OK? When we think about shared value, all of a sudden, we unite our goals with the other stakeholders. Government cares about solving social problems. NGOs care about solving social problems. We all have the same goal. And it may be health, or it may be nutrition, or it may be a certain environmental issue, or it may be X, or it may be Y, but all of a sudden, we are aligned with these stakeholders. So what we're starting to understand is that shared value opens up a completely new discussion with stakeholders, with the other stakeholders, uh, and creates opportunities for joint effort and activity and investment uh, that are profoundly different than anything we've ever thought of. And you'll hear about some of that over the course of the day. Uh, and the ability for large-scale impact and rapid progress when, when we can think this way uh, is, is, is profound. Another interesting thing is when you think about shared value, uh, for example, in the food sector, you, you're trying to, you, you, you're, you're, you're a company, you're worried about health. Well, it turns out that, that you know, it's, there's other businesses that affect the health of that same consumer. So all of a sudden, you, you have an alliance or a partnership of interest with other businesses that you never thought you were related to. 
because they're also focusing on those same issues of health. So, how, so what we're seeing is new kinds of uh, interactions across seemingly unrelated businesses. If you look at the product, it's unrelated. If you look at the purpose, it's fundamentally aligned. So again, we're going to see all kinds of, of, of activity in this, in this regard. Uh, I, I'm, I'm out of time as usual, uh, but I'm going to take one, a little bit of time to talk about uh, investors. We are now having a very interesting dialogue with the investment community. And of course, the investment community historically has thought that their goal is purely to maximize economic returns. That's their fiduciary duty. And I think we all kind of understand that. Uh, as, as socially responsible investing has taken hold, we've kind of been through the same predictable cycle as we did in corporate relationship with society. Uh, much of the socially responsible investing so far has been really about uh, negative screening. You know, how do we screen out the people doing business in Sudan and selling tobacco? And, um, and, and then more recently about sort of uh, ESG, uh, uh, you know, compliance. Um, you know, we've looked for companies that kind of reported acceptable results on all the metrics that, that uh, have been thrown out there. And, there, and th there's dozens and hundreds of them. Um, now, there's no surprise that this kind of investing is not particularly aligned with economic success. Uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's okay to have these ethical screens and, 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 and have these screens based on you know, ESG performance. But the odds that that's going to have an impact on economic success are, are pretty small. And all the research is pretty, is pretty much confirms that. Now, you know, uh, the impact investing movement, which is, which is somewhat more recent, and, and, and our, our Rockefeller Foundation, that's one of our supporters, has been profoundly important there. That starts to take us now across a line, which gets us very excited about the alignment between investing and, 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 and shared value. Um, because you know the whole idea of impact investing is that a company can have economic returns, but it can also have societal impact. So that was a very important idea. Um, but but basically the idea there ha uh, can now go to the next level. So we, we believe that where we're going now is we're going to where there's going to be a, something called shared value investing, and people are going to do shared value investing not because they're trying to be social, but because they're trying to make a good return. <laughs> And because the companies that are going to grow, the companies that are going to be most productive, the companies that are going to be the disruptors are the ones that get to shared value, the ones that understand these opportunities. And so if you look at it this way, really, shared value expands the opportunity set for a company. And therefore, it must be part of core investment analysis. This is not some different analysis that you apply. This is actually what good investment analysis is. It looks for companies that are innovating in terms of their product and their productivity and, and, and how they do business in ways that will distinguish them and differentiate them from competitors. So I, I, uh, over, over, the, over the coming years, we are going to do uh, uh, as much as we can to bring this thinking into the investment community. We have a tremendous a warm reception so far, although a lot of skeptics still. Um, and, and as we prove more examples uh, of, of shared value that, that have big stakes uh, for companies, I think that's going to get easier and easier. Where we are now, though, is I think we understand the opportunity. We see more and more examples. Uh, we're starting to understand some of the uh, critical fundamentals about how to connect uh, the dots to get uh, shared value to happen in an organization. But ultimately, there's a, still a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of the how. How do we actually go about this? How do we build the right measurements? How do we create the right organizational model to really drive this to every single business unit in the company? Um, and that's really why we're here in this meeting. And that's what the Shared Value Initiative is all about. And, and that's why we're so thrilled and pleased that all, you, all of you are here. 
Um, and we hope that uh, the course this day will be uh, exciting and, and, and interesting and you'll learn a lot. Probably the most important thing you'll get out of this day is the people sitting around you that you end up meeting and talking to. Uh, this is a community of practitioners. We have some of the leading practitioners in the world here. Um, and, I, and I encourage you to take advantage not only of the formal program, but all these opportunities to really get in at the ground floor of how you actually make this happen in the organization. <laughs>